Hey everyone, how's it going? Brian here with another Java game programming tutorial. So the last time we left off, we made a button up in the top left here uh, to make our tower cannon blue. Uh, at least in my case it is, you might have a different tower than I do. Click it, you can see where you're going to place the tower ahead of time without actually placing it. And you click to place the tower, it becomes active and starts firing. Um, it also charges 20 gold, cash, money, minerals, whatever you want to call it. Uh, to place the tower, just as it used to do, we get extra money for killing stuff. What? Why does this go from 180 to 185? It must be from, oh, completing the wave or something. Anyways, what we're going to do this time is we're going to extend our buttons up here. We're going to add another button for the ice tower, and hopefully it'll show just how easy it is to actually uh, make buttons for towers. So I know last episode we spent a lot of time in the player class and game class, and we're going to be doing that again, but it should be a lot easier in fact, maybe like a fifth of the time just to add another button. And that's the beauty of programming and making methods. You set it up the first time and just kind of use them and uh, utilize them to their full potential later on. So first off, I'm gonna change this texture up here in the top left. If you recall last week, I said I'd put a full Canon texture for the Canon Blue up for patrons um, on patreon.com slash indie programmer. Where, where should I change that? Uh, da, 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 da. Probably in the tower. No. Game. Yeah, it's right here. So, where I make a button. Here we go. Cannon gun blue. Uh, cannon blue full is what I called it, I believe. Let's see. There we go. So, yeah, you can have this texture whatever you want to be in the top left. Uh, I made a full texture because I think it looks better than just the gun. But if you like the gun, you can just keep it like that. If you just want the base, you can make it that. Or if you have your own texture, you can set to that, obviously. Uh, this texture is available for episode 60 uh, on the Patreon page for that episode. And you can just go ahead and download it there if you want it. And I actually made a one for the next tower too, the, the tower ice is a full texture as well. So let's go ahead and make a new button. So the first step to do that, to make another button for another tower, would be right in our setup UI method here. We make the new UI, we add our first button. So right below that, we're gonna go tower picker UI dot add button. Uh, I'm making it for the ice tower, so I'll call it Canon Ice. The texture name is Canon Ice Full. Uh, make sure to make it a string though, let's put it in quotes. Canon Ice Full. The X and the Y are interesting because here we are putting an actual value here, like a, a hard value of 64, because our textures and our tiles are 64 pixels by 64 pixels but obviously we don't want to keep this forever. Um, players will be using different resolutions. Uh, maybe your textures are a different size. Maybe you're making a 32 by 32 base game or 128 by 128 or you know whatever other size. Maybe the texture is just all different sizes, which I wouldn't recommend, but you know who knows. Um, so next episode, I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a new class or maybe a class within the UI class that handles menus. Uh, I think I mentioned this last episode. So it, it basically it would just look something like add button and then we wouldn't put the X or the Y. We would just have some kind of class or method helper that automatically sets it up for us. So if you guys want to go ahead and do that on your own, you can do that as well, but we'll probably do it next episode. Um, basically all it would do is just calculate how many buttons have been made so far and you know move them according to the texture width of each button. But anyway, so for our tower button, uh, for the Canon Ice Tower, I'm just going to put it at 64x and 0y, so the top of the screen, but still a little bit over from the, the blue cannon. The next step after making the button here is to make an action for the button. Uh, da, 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 da. So yeah, we'll do that right below this one. I'm going to say if tower picker UI dot is button clicked, I named it Canon Ice. Then we're going to do pretty much what we just did above which is player dot pick tower new tower cannon ice or is it just tower ice new tower ice and put the tower type there tower type dot cannon ice I should probably rename the class to make it more uniform anyways tower type dot cannon ice the grid does not matter so I'll just use zero at zero and for the wave manager just get the enemies wave manager dot get current wave dot get enemy list. 
and that should all work there. Let's uh, rename this right now before I forget. Tower Ice, I'm gonna name it Tower Cannon Ice because cannons are gonna have like a whole uh, set of attributes that they all share. They all like shoot a projectile, different from like a laser or a missile. A cannon is kind of like shooting a projectile out. So how do we rename this? It's called a refactor, is this it? Yeah, refactor, rename, Tower Cannon Ice. All right, and just automatically update the, the calls to it, like right here. Uh, so now our button is done, we've made it, we have an action for it, and you're thinking, well, it should all work, right? Well, there's one more change we need to make, and you won't need to make this every time, uh, just the first time. We forgot to set it up last time, or we, I told you to set it up incorrectly last time, so we're gonna fix that. Right now, you'll see the button should be appearing at the top left, right next to your first button. The first one should still work, and the second one, oh, it works. Just kidding, it doesn't work. So even though we're clicking this one, and we have a temporary tower here that looks like the tower ice, it's still for some reason placing the tower cannon blue. So what that must mean is somewhere in our player class, we are manually setting the cannon blue instead of the temp tower. Because in our game class, our action is when we click the uh, button, we're using the pick tower method in our player. So if we just follow through the steps here, let's go to our player class, look at the pick tower method right here. What that does is it takes the tower that we pass in which we're correctly passing in the cannon ice tower, right? Tower type dot cannon ice. And it sets that to our temp tower, or rather it sets our temp tower equal to that tower type. And it says we're holding a tower. And holding tower equals true just means we're gonna draw the tower. Um, so right here, holding tower is true. That's what gets it to draw on the map without actually placing it. So what's next after that? Well, next we actually place the tower and we use our place tower method here. If holding tower, which we are, if we can afford it, and it says cannon blue here. That's why it's still placing the blue cannon. Uh, so this is a really easy fix, and in fact, I, I don't know how I didn't see it last time. I guess I just planned on doing it this episode. Um, but we're going to really utilize our temp tower here. This is going to be easier than you probably thought the fix was going to be. We're just going to erase all this stuff here in the arguments, and we're just going to put in temp tower. That way, instead of doing some kind of uh, you know preset up tower cannon blue, we're just doing whatever we told the player to pick for our temp tower. So whatever we set in our game class via our buttons that are clicked, uh, whatever we tell the player to pick, that's the tower that they're going to show moving in the map. And now when we place it, that's the tower that's going to be placed on the map. The modify cache is still 20. So what I think we're going to do about that is go to the tower types and actually just include a cache value or a cost for each tower instead of there. Uh, and then we can just call for that cost in our player class. But uh, for now, let's just let's try this out and see if it works. Play. Make sure the first one works, which it does. And the second one. Boom, there we go. Looking good. And it should slow the enemy, and it does perfectly. Great. Uh, if we right-click, we can still place these towers, which we don't want. So let's just go ahead and remove that. Uh, that's like simple days. That's like baby programming. Back when we had to right-click for a different tower than left-clicking. Now we got these fancy new buttons. Uh, that'd be in the player class. Handle mouse input right here. We have our right click. Uh, we can just get rid of this entire if statement here. So right click will be empty right now. Uh, if you want to do something, I don't know, just to make sure that the game registers it, just say right clicked. So when you left click, you'll place the tower you're holding. When you right click the tower or the uh, console, will just say right clicked. Okay, so that is how you add a button. Uh, you won't need to change this obviously again. So really it's only two steps. You just add a button up here and then you add an action for when that button is clicked. And if you know, you're one of those people that is going ahead of the series and has six or seven towers, you can now add those all in just 14 lines for the seven towers, two lines each. So thanks a lot for watching. Well, actually more lines than that, actually. We guess it'd be two, three, three lines. Anyway, thanks a lot for watching and I will see you all next time on Indie Programmer. <laughs>